even though they cause you harm. You, at the end of the day, don't want him to run away. You want him to become further deviated. You want to bring him home. You want to bring him close. Allah said to the Prophet wasallam, it was from the mercy of Allah that Muhammad, you were soft with them. And had you been tough and harsh with them, they would have run away from you. You know, even Yusuf salam after his brothers, you know, first they wanted plotted to kill him and then they decided to throw him in the well. How merciful was Yusuf to them? He said, today there's no blame on you. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhum. So, in this episode we spoke with a sister who's got a brother who's quite, you know, quite, you know, is, is a problem child. Um, is aggressive, abusive. You know, drugs, you name it, all that stuff Doesn't listen to parents So most of the conversation, um, I cut it Because it wasn't relevant You know, a lot of it was more just Trying to understand the situation So I could maybe facilitate some help for them uh, But in terms of the actual advice that I gave her I've kept that in And I think that might be beneficial for a lot of you <clears throat> So if it doesn't make sense what she's saying It's because I've intentionally cut it up And so that you can understand what she is saying I will tell you now what she's talking about is how to deal with her brother because he's quite abusive so then i gave her advice on how to deal with someone who might be oppressing you you're just trying to give doubt to them and they're just oppressing you and a lot of you will be able to relate you've got siblings who are problematic that you don't know how to deal with and this should obviously help also just to remind you guys i've got the child my buy merchandise in the store uh if you guys want to get some of this child my merchandise Click the link below. I've got my weekend class where you're more than welcome to join me, inshallah ta'ala, on the uh, weekends. <laughs> Click the link below, inshallah ta'ala, if you want more information for that. And of course, you want, if you want to be on the next episode, email at nasirsession.gmail.com and click the notification bell, if you button bell, if you haven't already done so. Peace. I, I don't really want to say it. You know, I've said it on the email and it's quite explicit, the email. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, he's, is violent and I'm a you know I'm a grown mature girl now so it's a bit like I know that we're not allowed to cut ties with our family uh-huh. but to what extent do I like stay away from him so because it affects me as well and my other sp- siblings but it's, it's really hard because I'm not I'm not there you know if I was there if I was there I would say right now I'm coming to your house to speak to him so like, is he there I'll come now you know that but it's just because you guys are in a different city it's a bit hard and if I ever do come back Inshallah ta'ala I'm, I'm at your service You know I'll be happy to sit down Speak with him um, But um, I would give you one advice Inshallah I don't want to put you To put yourself In a situation Where you could be You know Harmed But just remember one thing You know um, Allah said to the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِن تَلَهُمْ It was from the mercy of Allah That Muhammad You were soft with them وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا قَلِيدَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ And had you been tough and harsh with them, they would have run away from you. Then Allah said, because this is in the context of them of them disobeying the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ got harmed because of this. He ﷺ actually got harmed because of this. He got hit in the head with a sword and he bled. Because the companions at Battle of Uhud, they didn't listen to what he told them to do. He didn't, they didn't listen to what he told them to do. And because of it, companions got killed that day. And the Prophet himself got harmed that day. So Allah said to the Prophet, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظًا قَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ Had you been tough and harsh with them, they would have run away from you. But, by the, by, but from the mercy of Allah, you suffer them. Then Allah said, فَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Seek forgiveness for them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ And discuss with them, counsel with them, seek counsel with them. Meaning, basically, even after they violated, even after they didn't listen, you still carry on being soft with them. Even though they caused you harm. Even though they caused you harm. You, at the end of the day, don't want him to run away. You don't want him to run away. You don't want him to run further away. You don't want to become further deviated. You want to bring him home. You want to bring him close. Do you see? You don't want him to deviate. Yes. The harsher you are with him, the more you close him off. The more you close him off, the further away he will go. 
Do you see? So the person yeah. teaching the, the companions that they, they made a mistake. But فَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ Allah said فَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ Seek forgiveness for them. وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ And counsel them. Sit with them. Seek shura with them. Seek counsel from them. So the Prophet ﷺ was able to do that. And that's why the companions were so attracted to him. And that's why even his enemies, they came back to him, apologized to him, repenting for their sins. You know, even Yusuf salam after his brothers, you know, first they wanted plotted to kill him and then they decided to throw him in the well. How merciful was Yusuf to them? He said, La tathri, la alaykum al-yawm. He said, Today there's no blame on you. You know, he you know if you say I forgive you, it means you've done something wrong. So there was something to forgive. He said, There's no blame on you. Meaning you didn't even do anything wrong. Of course he did something wrong, but it's the way he's treating them. You know, and that's what made them warm to him and come back to him. And he says, Makarim al akhlaq It's the highest form of manners. Not saying put yourself in harm's way. No, no, not at all. No, no, don't don't you dare put yourself in a situation where you're gonna get harmed and don't allow that to happen to yourself. And you must seek help if you're in that situation. You know I'm saying you must seek help and make sure you don't, you know, that you 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 know that 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 that, that you, you can't allow that to continue. But I'm saying you can navigate a situation outside of that kind of situation and just have that higher moral conduct. And that's what happened, you know, after they tortured the Prophet Ali Sam, they done so much to him, they tried to kill him, they tried to kill him, they killed him and his companions, they waged war on him so much. And the Prophet finally conquered Mecca and they were at his mercy. They said, Muhammad, we expect, you know, we expect mercy from you. This is what we expect from you, mercy. We know, we know you to be a merciful man. We know you to be a merciful man. You know? And he was merciful to them and they accepted Islam in droves, in the thousands, the tens of thousands. They started accepting Islam. You know, sometimes it takes time. But that, you know, that higher moral, higher moral conduct shines through. You know, your family at the end of the day and, and their day is going to come where he's going to need you. Make yourself available for yeah. that day. Make yourself available. Leave the door open for him to come back to you for need that day. That day when he comes, he's going to come back with his tail between his legs because he's violated you, disrespected you. And guess what? You, his sister, came in handy that day. That might be the day that he sees and he turns around and he comes back. Do you see? And always remember yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa to go to Fir'aun. He said, Say to him, قولاً, لينن, Say to him a soft word. Speak to him in a soft way. You know, Harun al-Rashid, one time was written a letter by a man. Harun al-Rashid was one of the leaders of the Muslims, one of the Khulafa. He was written, a, a man wrote him a letter, being very rude and tough with him. He wrote back and said, listen, Allah told Musa to go to Fir'aun. And he said, speak to him in a soft way. He said, you are not better than Musa and I'm not worse than Fir'aun. So don't I at least deserve to be spoken to in a less way? If Musa, who's better than you, and Fir'aun is worse than me, but Musa still speaking to him in a soft way, then should you not now also speak to me in a soft way? Do you see? Yes. So that will be my advice because that will help bring him back. But I repeat, don't put yourself in a position where you can get harmed. No, I'm just saying that you know, outside of all of that, there's ways to navigate the situation within the house. You know, and, you know, some people might take pride and whatnot and say, you know what, I'm not going to go back to him. I'm not going to be nice. I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. But that's our ego speaking at the end of the day. You know, yeah. Allah sees, Allah will not let your efforts go to waste. You know, Allah Azza wa will give you so much ajr for this. You know what I'm saying? And you ultimately want it to be guided, right? So yeah. I would even I would even if he's in the house I would even go to him right after this phone call conversation, and I would just um, just be nice to him. I'm not saying he okay. deserves it. He doesn't deserve it. No, not at all. But he needs it. He doesn't deserve it. But he needs it. It's not about what he deserves. It's about what he needs. Because if he carries on this path and he dies, then. It would be very scared for him where he's going to end up, right? Yeah. And then we're all going to regret it. No matter how evil your sibling is to you today, when they're dead and buried, everyone feels that pain. Everyone wishes, oh, if only I tried more. 
you say. Um, yeah. So don't let the ego get in the way. And you're doing it for the sake of Allah. And don't ever stop making du'a for him. You know, don't ever stop yeah. making du'a. Du'a is very important. And these are just be my general advices that hopefully will be able to help you, inshallah. I don't know if that was of much help. Yes, that was that was actually really good. It answered my question actually. Because I was gonna ask how do we act towards him, but I know now. Alhamdulillah. Um so with that said, inshallah, I'll also try and get the brother in touch with you. Just do me a favor and just follow up my colleague if I don't get it done. Um because sometimes we're a bit slow with these things because we're a bit overwhelmed with everything. But I'll I'll do it. Or maybe you might have access to him yourself, you know, through the community. Uh and you might be able to get a hold of him faster than me. But whatever you think is best, let us know, inshallah, and we're happy to put the effort in from our side. Okay. Inshallah. May Allah bless you, sister. Take care of yourself. Okay. Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Guys, this right here is a Big Mac. Do you have any idea how much McDonald's spends every year on their advertisement? They spend $450 million. You know why? Because this Haram Burger is valuable to them. Now, on the flip side, when it comes to promoting a Dawa project, how much do you think Dawa organizations' budget is? And I'm talking about organizations that don't compromise their da'wah. They keep it 100% Quran, Sunnah without doing anything dodgy. Our budgets are nowhere near close. Now the kuffar don't feel shy to put their money behind what they believe in because they value it. But we know for definite that they don't value their burgers and their haram meat more than we value the book of Allah then why is it that we become so tight-fisted when it comes to spending money on La ilaha illallah? You see, it's embarrassing that you will struggle to find a house on planet Earth that doesn't know about McDonald's and doesn't know about the Big Mac. Yet, there are houses that don't know about La ilaha illallah. That's an embarrassment. For that reason, brothers and sisters, I'm going to ask you, to get involved in an investment that's going to benefit you in your life and the next life. And that is to support our social media data project. You're going to struggle. And this is respectfully a challenge. You'll struggle to find a data organization that's got as much output as us. I mean, look at our productivity and look at our reach. We're the closest thing that you're going to get to a mainstream, uncompromised, Fully 100% classical, pure understanding of the deen on social media in the West. If you find someone better than us, if you find someone that's doing it better than us and bigger than us, go support them. It's on you to go support them. But if not, then brothers and sisters, we're doing a job for you. I don't know about you, but I gave my life to this cause. I gave my life to it. Kuffar can put 100% in behind what? Haram food. And we can't do that behind what? The speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without any further ado, brothers and sisters, donate at the link below. And let's get la ilaha illallah spreading around the world. Peace.